Okay, so in section 7.3, I'm going to introduce you something called the basic percent equation. Basic percent equation. You guys ever go clothes shopping? Yeah. Well, you're all wearing clothes, so I assume you go clothes shopping at some point, unless your your mommy or daddy buys your clothes for you still, which that would kind of suck. That's what happens to me. So no, I'm just kidding. So I picked this up myself. I know it's embarrassing, but I, I really do. Uh, anyway, um, if you ever go clothes shopping, you probably see sales all the time, right? You go over to Kohl's or J.C. Penney's; they're always having sales. In fact, if you ever pay full price for something. Well, that's not very smart in this day and age because they're going to have a sale eventually on that item. You with me? So you're going to often see sales when you're clothes shopping. So let's say we go clothes shopping. And you go along and you find this really nice pair of jeans, all right? The pair of jeans is $84. Better be a nice pair of jeans for $84, right? $17.99 right here, folks, that's right. <coughs> Love those jeans. Anyway, so you get this nice pair of jeans, though, for $84, except you, you go and you find this little sale that says, hey, this pair of jeans is 25% off. We're gonna find out how much that's gonna cost you. Now, of course, 25% off, that, that's just a quarter off, so we might be able to do this in our head or a different way, but I'm gonna introduce to you the, the basic percent equation. That's gonna allow us to solve this with proportions. Are you ready for it? So what we wanna find out is this. We wanna find out what is 25% of $84? That's the question. Here's one way that we can answer that. Here's a very nice universal way of answering percent equations. It's called the basic percent equation. So our basic equation here. You might have even seen this before. Here's what the basic percent equation does. It sets up a proportion for you which is just the equality of two fractions. So we're still looking at it, these fractions. Remember those proportions? Where you cross multiply to solve those things? I hope you remember those. Now there's some key words that are going to occur in most of your percent problems. And if they're not there, you can make them there. You can rewrite the problem. We'll talk about that later, much later. But in every single percent problem that you deal with, you're generally given a word is, a word of, some percent, and then this number 100, we're going to keep there all the time because a percent and is parts over 100. So this is a given for us. So that 100 is there no matter what. We have is over of equals percent over 100. How many people have seen that before? Have you seen that before? No? If not, this is going to be kind of nice for you. You're going to see how this works very nicely to find out any percentage of any number. Can you read through that? What is 25% of 84? And, and identify these key words. Do you see the word is? How about the word of? Yeah. How about a percent somewhere? And the 100, we, we never change that. So if we go ahead and we solve this problem, so we're down to what is 25% of 84, that's our example. The 100 is going to be there no matter what, and we've got to fill out the rest of these spots. Let's start with the, let's start with the ones that are actually there. What about the percent? What percent are we given? 25. So right here under the percent, we're going to put 25. So if it's 25%, we write the number 25. You okay on that? Yeah. Notice how we don't have to change it to 0 0.25. We don't have to do that because the dividing by 100, that does that for us. You, see, you with me on that? That does that for us. So the 25 over 100, that is 0.25. You're just going to leave it as 25 over 100. Not sure if you're okay with that. See where that 25 is coming from? Yes? Okay. Now, how about the word of? It says, what is 25% of 80? What, what would you put under the of? 84. Yeah, of 84. So that 84 is going to go right here. Now, wait a second. What's the is? 
variable. It says, it says what is? I don't know. What is? Well, we'll put a variable there. Put x. So the way this works, we go, okay, what, it, what is, is we don't know. 25%, 25 for our percent. Of 84, of 84 right there, and then 100, that doesn't change at all. Hey, ignore all this stuff. Does this look familiar? Well, I sure hope so. How do you solve that? Cross multiply. Why don't you do that right now, everybody? Cross multiply. You should be able to cross multiply at this point. We've been doing that for a while. Remember that you've got a calculator now, right? So these big numbers shouldn't really intimidate you. We have 100x. Equals 84 times 25. How much is 84 times 25 on your calculator? 2100. Are you done? You can leave it 100x equals 2100? What are you going to do? Good. You know, I'm going to move up here a little bit. X equals what? 21. 20, 21 what? Dollars. We're talking about money here, so that's $21. All right. Now, let me ask you a question. Here's the critical thinking part of this, this question, all right? So if you walk up to the register, are you going to expect to pay $21? No. What is the $21 representing? That's your savings. So you're actually saving $21. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. If it's, what's 25%? If, you're, if it's a 25% off sale, hope you're watching this. Hope you're paying attention. This is going to come back at you in the next couple sections here. If you're talking about a 25% off sale, that says find 25% of what, you, what number your original price is, find that out, and then subtract it from your original price. So if we're saving 25%, that says we're saving $21. Can you figure out how much I'm going to pay for this this pair of jeans? Yeah. How much? Yeah. 63. How are you find out 63? Sure. So if I take my $84, which is my original, minus the $21, that's my savings. So this is full price. This is the savings. You get sixty-three dollars, oh. or you pay sixty-three dollars. Would you raise your hand? Feel okay about that one? Yes, no. Guys in the back, yeah. So we're gonna pay sixty-three bucks for this. So you go to the cash register now that you know how to do percentages. If they ring you up, they go, "Okay, you owe me. Uh, let's see, seventy-eight dollars." 70, or no, 77, what would that be, 8, 8, 40. They say you owe me 75, 60. Did they do the math right? No. They gave you about 10% off, not 25% off. So they rang it up incorrectly. That way at least you'd be able to, at least you know, right? Mm -hmm. That way you don't get home and go, yeah, that's, I, I guess that's right. You just trust the people that register because honestly, a lot of them don't know what they're doing. They just punch numbers into a computer and hope that it's right. They don't, they don't go through any training usually to find out percentages. They just trust the computer. Or if they do, they forget it all the time. I have people overcharge me all the time or undercharge me. You ever get undercharged? Yeah. All the time. You wonder how these businesses stay in business with the, the amount of money they give back that's, that's wrong. They get undercharged, overcharged. I guess they figure it's going to wash out eventually. But if you're going to be a, a good business person, you probably don't want to be overcharging some people and undercharging some people, right? Because the people who get overcharged are going to complain. And you're going to have to, you're going to, have to give them money back. People who get undercharged aren't ever going to tell you, right? So you're going to lose money all the time. That's not a good way to do business. You probably want to know these percentage sales, these percentage uh, that you're paying in taxes, the percent that you're going to get in commission to be able to run your life accordingly. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Oh. So what if they do the math wrong? What if it's in the computer wrong? Yeah. If it's, it's a lot of times in the computer wrong because people punch it in they go, oh, instead of 25%, maybe they press a 1 instead of a 2. And they give you 15%. The average person in the world is not going to know the difference. The average person is not going to know the difference between 25% and 15%. They're going to go, 
I guess I saved seven bucks when you should be saving $21, you know? It's a big difference. Do you see the importance of what we're learning? I hope so. Now, there's another way to, to do this. Another way we can consider these questions. It's kind of, kind of fun. We can also say how much one number is as a percentage of another. So, for instance, we can ask this question. 32 is what percent of 20? I'll give you a little hint. This question is going to come back at you. This is going to be a question called percent increase. Here's the deal. Let's say that, um, that your daily income went from $20 a day, to th or an hour, whatever you get paid. Let's say you get twenty dollars an hour. That's great. That's great pay. So you get twenty bucks an hour, and they say you're going to get a raise. We're now going to give you thirty-two dollars an hour. Is that a good raise? Oh yeah, that's a great raise. We're going to find out later what percent increase that is. So we'll be able to solve that problem and, and figure out what, as a percentage, you increased. Right now, we're going to figure out this number compared to this number is how much percent. Now, can you identify some of the key words that we had over here? Do you see an is, an of, a percent, a 100? Well, you don't see the 100, but that's going to be there no matter what. Let's see if we can figure out what this equation is. Let's start with the is. It says 32 is what percent of 20? What's our is in this case? Do you know? It says 32 is, right? 32 is. So our 32, where does that go? Top, bottom, or top? Uh, top. This top? 32. 32 is, that's right. What percent of 20? Tell me the next thing I can fill out. Percent, okay. Y and X. Good, yeah, it says what percent. I don't know. I don't know what percent. Why do I put the 20 on the bottom? That's the of. Sure. We had our is, that's 32. We've got our of, our of says 20. X, we don't know the percent, so that's going to be X over 100. You okay with that one so far? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can solve it. If we solve it, we're still going to cross multiply. We'll have 20x equals 32 times 100. Nice having that 100 up there, isn't it? The 100 is nice to work with. You get 20x equals 3,200. If we divide by 20, am I going too fast for you? Are you guys okay with that? We've done this a lot, so I'm kind of speeding it up a little bit, but we've Simply cross multiply, multiply those numbers, and then divide it. So we, we've been doing these proportions a, a while now. X equals, well, I'm, I'm hoping you got 160. What? Now, can you tell me, 160 what? Percent. Ah, that's a percent. We were talking about percents here. Notice how the X is in the percent spot. Are you with me on that? So if you leave it as 160, are you right? No. 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 You need a what after that again? Percent. So the units we're talking about are pretty important. Here we had to be talking about dollars, so you put the dollar sign. Here we're talking about a percentage, so you're going to put the percent sign. So what this says is that, if you look at it, is 32 bigger than 120? Is 32 bigger than 120? No. 32 is not bigger than 120? I'm sorry, 20. Ha, it said 120. You're probably confused as heck right now. Is 32 bigger than 20? Yes. Sure. So it's more than 100% of 20. So it, it's bigger than that. It's more than 100%. In fact, it's 160% of 20. This is comparatively size